definitely give me any any examples of where it's been tricky. Every shape that's created on the front of the rear of the vehicle must respect the approach and the departure angle. Otherwise, as you quite rightly said, people will not see this as fit for function. Essentially, the Grenadier's base is going to be in Wales. Why Wales? Well, we wanted to be able to create our own identity. What we wanted to do was have our own facility. We didn't want to take somebody else's. We wanted to create something specific. Oliver, it's great to see you. What are the, the really big challenges to conquer from your point of view? To have the digital uh, engineering done, but now you have to actually put it in the physical world, and this is ahead of us. Dirk, thank you very much for finding some time to speak to me. I know you're a very busy man. So what, what stage are we at now? Coming out of COVID, coming out of that crisis, we have lost some time here and we need to make it up. We are not jeopardizing the quality, so we need to find ways of testing uh, very hard, very rigorously. What is that photo on the other side of you? That's actually a, a picture of uh, the winter testing. That is the Grenadier? This is a, a Grenadier prototype running in Sweden, yes. When will the world get to see it? I think it's a matter of weeks now. You can look forward to it soon. A little over a year ago, no one had even heard of the Grenadier. Now everyone in the off-road world is talking about it. And one thing has become very clear. As potential drivers, users, owners of this extraordinary 4x4, you are hungry for engineering and design detail. Well, no problem. Welcome back to Building the Grenadier. For this episode, we've invited some serious off-roaders to take an exclusive first look at a very special Grenadier prototype, chassis 001. All right, fellas, I want you to take a look at something. Wow, that's pretty cool. I know you want to get underneath. <laughs> Look at that, it's absolutely lovely. I've always been a lover of what I call the iconic 4x4s and this to me is an iconic 4x4 for sure. The size, the way it's laid out, the position of the engine, everything I've looked at so far, it's going to be a workhorse. Can't wait to get hold of one. That's nice, I love this. But for a split door like this, there's a really brilliant wide opening area to look load and offload really heavy kit. I can imagine putting a pallet in there with Oil in for the machines, no problem at all. Good departure angles, and actually good approach angles as well, but it's, it's quite a wide bumper, but I, I like that because you can accept winches as well. Check them out then. Check them out. <sighs> ah, splendid. I tell you what, it's going to be very hard to drag these guys away, but they can take as long as they like because the whole point of today is to hear what they think whilst the Grenadier is still a work in progress. Now, I know it doesn't look like it is from the outside, but on the inside, it's very clear that there are still a lot of engineering and design decisions to be made, although the interior itself is nearly finished and I should be able to show you it in a few weeks' time. But the wait is over when it comes to the wheels and tyres. Following a rigorous research and development programme, INEOS engineers chose 17-inch steel wheels as the standard setup. But as you know, there's loads more prototype testing underway, so that choice can't be confirmed just yet. INEOS has clearly never made a tyre, never made a wheel before, so how, how did you go about developing what is a unique bespoke package for this vehicle? So we, we started the uh, selection process more than a year ago uh, with some tests on our first prototypes and after uh, the evaluation of these tests we nominated Bridgestone as a capable but also a very willing supplier. The Grenadier will come with tailor-made Bridgestone tyres as standard. INEOS believes Bridgestone is the perfect tyre partner. The company has nearly a century of experience, plus the necessary global network to support a 4x4 built for the world's most remote places. So 
tyre options, there will be for, for people who, who want something more aggressive, there will be an option for a BF Goodrich tyre. The standard tyre is the one that you, Andy, at Bridgestone are developing, which is this. Now, this is, this is a demo tyre, because yep. you walk up and go, it's a little bit small, a little bit small yeah. but it demonstrates actually the tread pattern. So you're, you're saying that you've got a, a, a tyre you've already developed, it's been proven, it's been tested, Absolutely. but you're then kind of up-specking it specifically for the Grenadier. Absolutely, so we, um, we've changed the compound uh, initially so that it's got better off-road performance, particularly in the snow, and also we've changed the construction slightly to make it um, more tuned, uh, and this particularly helps with the steering in laden and um, fully laden conditions with the trailer. Lots of people, when buying cars, there's going to be kind of perception, isn't there, that you know standard means second best. That's not the case here, is it? Absolutely not, no. So we've worked really hard with um, the Grenadier team to make sure that what is offered to uh, the standard fitment is absolutely what is required for the vast majority of people running the Grenadier. So the package that we've put together with the wheel uh, and the tyre is suitable. It's snowflake marked, so it performs as well in the snow as it does in the mud. Um, and it is great on-road capability as well. So, so let's, ju let's just focus on the, on the rims. From a materials point of view, is the reason you've gone for steel as the standard as obvious as you might expect that it's incredibly robust and you can beat it with a hammer if you bend it? It has to be robust, you know, for a car, but also durable. Uh, and, and steel wheels would be perfect for, uh, you know, for use in winter and also for hard, um, hard conditions. From a sizing point of view, you've gone for 17 inch and 18 inch diameter rims, why not 16? In terms of brakes, you know, we had to respect a specific package to perform as expected and clearly the 16 didn't fit, uh, you know, for our brake system, so that's why we didn't go through uh, 16 inches. Wheel options will be larger 18 inch steels or unique alloys in both sizes, all fitted with the Bridgestone tyres. All right, what's been your, your kind of general feeling? It's just like ticking boxes, good engine, reliability, tick, automatic gearbox, reliability, tick, transmission, it's all there, all the axles, the way the body's built, put together, the big doors at the back, it's all there. You see it in, you know, on all the social media posts, the previous videos, we've, you know, you've seen all of that, we've all watched them, but actually to come here and see it and to, to measure up against what we were expecting. It's very much a very exciting project and I can't wait to see this thing out on the road. When you're trying to make a, a vehicle like this, the ultimate off-roader that's going to be used in incredibly varied conditions mm -hmm. in the automotive world, that's a, that's a hell of a thing to try and create a vehicle that's capable of, of doing all that. Do you get the sense this is a compromise? No. no. <laughs> this, this is the vehicle you want in, for the next 20 years. You're just trying to make your vehicle as reliable as it is because there's nothing else out there at the moment to you know, replace it. Utilising older and older vehicles because there's nothing there that I feel is, can replace what I've got at the moment. And then coming to have a look at this, it's looking pretty good to be honest. It's nice that standard is on steels though. Car manufacturers constantly are pushing alloys to you. Steel wheel's fantastic, it does what it says on the tin. That's what a lot of people are going to want out of this. Yeah. How many of you have bashed out a bent steel wheel with yep. a big hammer? Yeah, yeah. 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 Sitting there with a sledge, <laughs> sledgehammer and smashing it back on, putting it back straight. Oh yeah, it's a little bit buckled. Ah, I'll be all right, blow it up, and off you go again. But it works, doesn't it? It works yeah. every and time. And it gets you home. Exactly that, it always get you home. Listen guys, I mean, a huge thank you from all of us. There'll be more chances to get involved in the future, so keep an eye out, and it could be you. That's it for now. Join me for the next episode of Building the Grenadier. So things are really ramping up now. In this episode, I want to take you behind the scenes of the new prototype production line in Austria and a first look inside the factory where your Grenadier will be built. After more than a year testing early development vehicles, they call the two A's, the Grenadier project has reached a major milestone. 
Ineos Automotive's engineering partner in Austria is now building a fleet of much more advanced next generation prototypes. You guessed it, the two Bs. Hans-Peter Pessler is the engineer in charge. We have around about 250 engineers working on this project. So everybody is pushing forward very hard because it's a big challenge. You've got loads of experience in the automotive industry, building cars for all kinds of big companies. What have been the real challenges that Grenadier has thrown at you? The first challenge was to understand what Ineos wants to have. So to get their ideas into the paper, into the, into the sketches, into the computer, and then finally into this card. We are very happy that we have these two A vehicles right now, and the next big phase is the 2B. And how many? Uh, around about, let's say, 80 plus. Welcome to the Grenadier's first small-scale production line. It's been created not just to build the limited run of new prototypes, but also to test and perfect every stage of the process, from start to finish. Experience gained here is helping the team plan the path to mass production. Each Grenadier is built from around 350 individual panels, a complex 3D jigsaw held together by glue and weld. The doors and closures are aluminium. The rest of the body is galvanised steel. The shells are protected with four coats of paint applied in a seven-stage process. Most will be white, black or silver. A few will have contrasting roofs. All the chassis are powder coated white to help detect cracks during testing. Axles and powertrains are supplied pre-assembled. The majority left-hand drive. It takes just over a month to build each prototype from scratch, but there are eight vehicles in build at any one time. When they leave here, these 2B prototypes will be put through extensive safety and performance testing. Some are destined for high-tech automotive science laboratories. Others will be shipped around the world to see if nature can break them. Lessons will be learned, of course, and the Grenadier will continue to evolve over the coming months. Yes, it definitely looks the part. Now the engineers must prove it can get the job done. Now, as you may know, Ineos Automotive has bought a manufacturing site in Hamback and it will be the home of the Grenadier. So I thought you might like to take a closer look. It's a massive facility, one of the most advanced vehicle assembly plants anywhere in the world. Thanks to the 500 million euros invested in it by Mercedes-Benz. Packed with state-of-the-art technology, it comes with a highly skilled team all trained to Mercedes exacting standards. The fully fitted factory just needs repurposing and reprogramming to build Grenadiers. And this is the man getting the job done. Obviously, Eric, there's been a lot of discussion about where Grenadier's factory will be. Why did you end up in Hamburg? We looked at uh, several sites throughout Europe. And then this was an, a, a unique opportunity where Mercedes had a change of strategy that coincided with us looking for a plant. And, and uh, the blessing here was that Mercedes has actually designed this plan for full-size SUVs. So very much a commercial opportunity then that you simply couldn't turn down? It, it, it's not only commercial, I would say, it's, it's a whole package. It's production cost, but it's also, also quality and, and capacity. So what have you actually got to do to get the facility ready for Grenadier? You can say that you have maybe three categories of work that needs to be done there. We have some cells where we just need to change some fixtures, need to reprogram the robots and so on. And we have some cells that needs to be rearranged. These are modular cells, so maybe some robot needs to be moved from one place to another. 
And then you have the third category where we actually tear the whole cell down and then what we do is we rebuild it. And all of that is done in the, in the body shop here behind me. In terms of quality control, what are you doing to make sure that Grenadier is fit for purpose and is going to be built to the reliability and quality standards that we as customers will expect? We have a very advanced, well-equipped quality uh, department here with very experienced former Mercedes quality people. And the focus is really based on the workstation to make sure that before a vehicle go from one zone to the next zone, that the people that are actually working in that zone ensures that the quality is correct. They don't pass on bad quality to the next station. We have four levels of quality at the station itself, at the end of that particular line before shipping out. And then we also have the audit process. So from where you're sitting right now, what are the big challenges coming up? So the next step is you build the two Bs, which are not kind of production intent material. Just to make sure that the vehicle goes together, you learn how to build the vehicle from that. Then what we do is we go into the next phase and that's when we start to build prototypes using the actual production process. And then what you do is you ramp up the production then uh, up until the speed that you want to, that you want to run. Listen, Eric, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, appreciate it. So the most advanced Grenadiers yet are now rolling off the prototype assembly line. And having taken over the existing high-tech factory in Hamback, INEOS engineers can now focus on refining the build process for mass production. So some very big developments. See you next time. <laughs>